Yes, it does. <clears throat> Hello, welcome everybody. Um, my name's George. I'm with Epic Fan Video, and I'm with my friend, friend Greg. How's it going, Greg? Hey, George. Good. You? Good. Uh, another day, another webinar. We seem to be doing a lot of these, which is great. And we're getting a lot of people toes. coming in and still attending these, which is, is phenomenal. You know, we've been doing this for like six months now, um, and we're still getting a lot of people signing in and, and registering and, and viewing them, which is, is awesome. I know. And what amazes me is that we still haven't completely perfected our setup. Like, <laughs> I'm still adding noise canceling stuff to my walls and trying to find colored lighting for the background and stuff like that. It is a constant uh, evolution, I find. And, I, I get a kick out of it, at least. And right when you get it perfected is when we'll be going back to the office, right? Exactly. But you know what I haven't done yet is I have not set up live transcription in my home studio here. So maybe that's the next step. And uh, we'll dive into that today. Uh, yeah, like you said, there's lots of people on Crowdcast already, which is great. Um, let us know where you're from. It's great to hear, uh, to, to know a little bit about the people who are watching this. I see Rude and Flannery and and John and Alan. Uh, this is, what is that show we used to watch? Uh, Romper Room. <laughs> Boca Dot Door. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, say hi in Crowdcast and make sure you ask any questions during the broadcast today because Greg and I will stick around and answer any of those questions at the end of the presentation part. Uh, hopefully you get all your answers you want out of uh, the presentation part, but, but we'll be happy to sit around and chat for a while. Uh, there's gonna be some other cool stuff coming up in the broadcast. There's gonna be some polls coming up here um, where we get to find out a little bit about you and hopefully cater our, cater our content to what you're looking for. So. Uh, without further ado, Greg, why don't we jump into this? Yeah. Uh, we have a little slide deck which we can uh, use to follow along with, and uh, we'll jump right in and start talking about uh, our agenda for today. So, Greg, you know the agenda. Why don't you tell everybody what are we going to dive into today? Sure. So we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, of course, which is, is live script. Uh, I've got a unit here with me as well, um, but I also have one that's actually connected and set up. And we're gonna talk about how you go through that whole setup, um, you know, the steps that you would take. And then we're gonna talk about, well, how do you actually see the transcription? And, you know, I've been doing a lot of demos. Um, they work really well. I can do them all online, which is, is really cool. Uh, but I get a lot of questions about, you know, I wanna do my transcription on top of my video feed. How do you do that? And we're actually gonna walk through exactly how you would do that today. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about some audio, audio optimization tips uh, because you know this is doing sound transcription so it's getting audio in and transcribing it and um, the better the audio quality is the better job it's going to do of transcribing so we're going to give you a couple of tips on that and then as George said you know if you have any questions throw them into the chat we're happy to answer anything that you've got fantastic so let's jump right into, into it. Tell me, I mean, I know, tell these people who are watching, what is LiveScript? How does it work? Uh, why is it interesting for people who want transcription? Sure, and you know, I'm assuming that most of the people that are on the call do know the value of being able to provide transcriptions for live events. So, you know, being able to have a record of what's being said for people to follow along, whether they have hearing challenges, whether they speak a different language, whether they're just distracted by something that's going on, um, having a transcription is extremely valuable for the attendees. Uh, even in situations like this where it's you know a remote thing, it's not actually live. Well, it's, it's live in terms of it's happening live, but not live as in terms of being in the same room. <laughs> Uh, but there's you know, still a lot of value in having transcriptions even on um, video feeds like this. So LiveScript is a product that brings audio in um, and provides a transcription output. And we've designed this to try to be as easy as possible to use. Uh, again, we're gonna kind of go through the setup, but it's basically a three-step setup uh, for getting your transcriptions available at all times. So the general idea is you bring audio in. There's a number of different audio inputs that you can use. And uh, in a couple of slides, we'll actually have a, a picture of the back of the box so we can see all of the different audio options. And then 
you hit the start button on the touch screen or you can do it through the web UI or through AV Studio and your transcription begins. You'll see it on the front screen of the device. It's also output through HDMI um, in a room. You could use it uh, for a monitor or a TV screen, for example. Um, and it's also streamed to a website so people can follow along from their mobile devices if they can't see the screen that's there or maybe they're in a different room or something but they still want to follow along. Cool. Um, and you've got one in your hands there now. Not in your hands, but on your desk right there. That you in my hands now. Play with and nice. So we can see this nice big shiny screen and it does make it that much easier to use because there's a screen on it. You can go and you can touch it. I mean, you don't have any, you're not trying to configure software to make this thing work. You don't have to do any kind of custom integration. So you can just run with this device. You put in your audio and away you go. Yeah. So it definitely solves a lot of problems for people who don't want to mess around and build their own engine for a transcription. <clears throat> um, and who is this for? So you've been talking to customers for the last six months since we announced this. Mm -hmm. uh, who's buying it? Uh, a lot of people are, um, and for a lot of different applications, and some that we hadn't really anticipated as well. So predominantly, we had been planning this for conferences. Um, you know, someone's getting up and they're presenting on a topic, and um, you know they want to have a screen in the room so that the attendees can follow along with what's being said. Uh, again, whether there's hearing challenges or language differences or distractions, so that they don't miss the message of what is being presented uh, during these events that oftentimes they paid for to attend, to learn something, or you know they want to go because they, they want that experience, they want to learn something from those. Uh, because a lot of those events aren't happening uh, in person anymore, we're getting a lot of interest from companies that are wanting to live stream their events and have the transcription as part of their video feed that they're sending out over the web. Um, We've been getting a lot of traction as well from education. So if there's a student who has you know, hearing challenges or, or language differences, um, they wanna make sure that that student is getting the full education they can. Um, and so having live script there to help that person is very beneficial. Uh, the education market also really likes it because you do get a text file of everything that was said immediately after the class is over. So students don't have to copy notes the entire time because they get a copy of everything that was said and can use that for their studying purposes. So they can focus more on what's being said, make sure they understand it instead of just trying to copy notes down. Uh, from a legislative standpoint, we've been getting a lot of interest from um, governments because it's a legal requirement to provide uh, transcriptions. And even for things like houses of worship or corporates, um, just making sure that your audience is, is fully engaged in everything that's going on, um, transcription really helps with that. Awesome. Um, I see a couple of questions coming in already in the chat, which is great, but I think we're going to answer some of these things that you're asking about. Uh, with this next section, which is when we go over the setup. So you have one, uh, another one in your office there that's actually plugged in and working that you're gonna show us how it works, right? Yes, yep, so I've, I've got one that's already set up and configured, um, but the configuration of this device is really easy. You, you get the box, you take it out, you plug in your internet into it, and you plug power in. Uh, once you've got that, on the front screen of the LiveScript device, it will give you a pairing code. So once it connects to the internet, um, you get this pairing code. You go to AV Studio and you create a free account and you pair your device. Um, so you put the pairing code in so that they match up and then you can give it a name. And then you have to add in your credit card information because there is a per usage bill for uh, using LiveScript. So it's $9.95 US per hour or part thereof. So if I was to use it for 20 minutes one time and 35 minutes another time, those are two different instances. So you get charged for two hours of use at that point. Um, and you would just get a credit card bill uh, monthly of the amount that you use the system for. If you didn't use it very much, your bill would be less. If you used it a lot, you would get that bill. Um, and you know, once you've done that, you basically just hit the start button on the front screen and it starts transcribing. So it, it works really well. Um, oh. Uh, Sorry, Greg. <laughs> no problem. My slides are jumping. 
Uh, the other thing that you can do through AV Studio is that you can um, create teams. So what you can do with that is, you know, as a, a team owner, I can add other team members into the uh, account. And then those people can also log into the system and there's different permission levels. So there's an uh, admin level, there's an operator level. Um, and, you know, if you're an operator of the system, well, you can access it. You can get downloads of the text file and the SRT file and things like that without you know, having someone that can actually change a lot of the settings uh, for the device itself. So you can create your team of people that are going to be using the system and um, you know, have it just kind of set up and, and ready to go for everyone. Yep, no problem. Oh, connections. Yeah, perfect. So, um, you know, I've got, got a unit here as well with me, but we can see the, the picture. So um, predominantly people are going to want to use the XLR or TRS inputs. Um, they're going to give you a little bit better quality audio than something like your um, RCA or your, you know, three and a half mil um, input. You can use HDMI or SDI as well. Uh, for live script, what I'll do is I'll actually strip out the video because this just deals with the audio side of things. I'll send the audio to the cloud uh, through whatever input source you're using and uh, we'll get a transcription file back and that's what we'll use to display on the various different locations that uh, live script works. Uh, you can also use USB. In this case, I'm actually using USB for my Perl. Uh, but the demo that I'm going to be using has an XLR microphone plugged into my live script unit, and that's what I'll use to get audio into the system. And I think with that, I believe the next thing that we're going to do is actually show you uh, a transcription from the live script device. So uh, you can see kind of behind me here, I've got my computer screen. I have the HDMI output from the live script that I have set up beside me. Um, that's configured and ready to go. And I have it plugged into my computer. Uh, so all I do is I hit the start button. And when I talk into the device, uh, into live script, it shows up on the front screen of the device. And you can kind of see it on the monitor behind me. It's coming in, uh, it is behind me, so you can't really see it that, that closely. Uh, but you know, this could be on a large screen somewhere or a monitor in the room. And the transcription is just output as a full screen output and the content is is displayed the other and we've done a lot of testing with this i i've been impressed like a lot of people want to know how accurate this is and i know we're going to get into that a little bit more but i'm always amazed at when i get to see this transcription coming in it gets just about everything and it goes back and corrects things so uh they're, it's getting really really clever and it's not perfect but it's close right yeah, you know, it's the testing that we've done has it in the low to mid 90% range, um, which for most people is sufficient to be able to follow along and be able to, you know, understand the differences between, you know, it was the wrong type of spelling or the occasional wrong word. Um, but yeah, it's going to be in that low to mid 90% range, which is is really good. Uh, we've had a lot of people that have, you know, received the units, uh, either done some testing on it or have actually started putting it into applications. And the feedback we've been getting has been uh, quite positive about the, the quality of the results that it gets. Um, as you mentioned, it does also go back and it will update some of the, the words. So with every word that it displays, it has a percentage that it thinks that word is accurate. And then as time goes on, it'll actually analyze not only that word, but the sentence around it to try to update and figure out, well, if I actually use this word instead, is that more accurate than the one that I had put in? And so it can make some of those on the fly corrections um, to try to improve the, the quality of the transcription. It also does try to add in things like punctuation. Um, that depends a little bit on who's speaking and how they're speaking. I tend to talk rather quickly and I ramble a little bit, so it's hard for the system to know when a sentence ends and another one starts because I don't really pause all that much. Uh, but, you know, 
a lot of people will, and it will try to put in the corrections um, in terms of punctuation for, you know, ending a sentence, uh, commas, question marks, things like that. And it will do multi-language as well. I mean, not at the same time, but it does. How many languages uh, does this uh, device work with, Greg? Yeah, so currently we have 33 different languages and variants in LiveScript. Um, as you said, it mm -hmm. doesn't do them simultaneously, so it is not a translation machine. It does transcription. Uh, but if I wanted to switch it to French or to Spanish or German or you know any of the other languages that we have in the system, it's as easy as going into the settings, choosing your language from a dropdown, hitting apply, and now it is going to transcribe in that language. Um, so if I speak that language, then the transcription would be in that language as well. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of other questions here that kind of relate to the quality of this. Um, how does it cope with industry specific acronyms? It depends a little bit on what the acronym is. So something that's very common like HDMI, it picks up very well. It understands what that is and, and we'll be able to put that out. Um, if you say letters, it will generally transcribe the letters. It's when you're using an acronym where you've actually turned it into a word as opposed to uh, the letters that it has a little bit more trouble unless it is something that is common enough that would be considered part of its dictionary um, so that it would know what those words are. Yeah, so I don't know what the benchmark for that kind of test, but maybe, I don't know, if your random neighbor might understand what that acronym is, there's a good chance that LiveScript would understand what that is too. It's about common language here, so uh, if it is very specific, it obviously won't because it's not part of the general library. There are some kind of ways to inject some uh, in, in industry codes, but we had much luck making that help with some of this jargon, if I recall. Yeah, and part of that is just because the library of terms that are available is already so large. So we had tried to switch it to a medical uh, application, and we read out, you know, the couple of paragraphs from someone's thesis, and you know, saw what the results were, and then we took that, you know, code away. Uh, and just use the standard dictionary and tried the exact same thing. And the results were just as good. Um, so, you know, because the dictionary of terms that it has is so vast, uh, we didn't really need to do a lot to really get better improvement on the transcription. Uh, the other mm -hmm. neat thing about it is because it is a dictionary that it's looking up, it only knows the correct spelling for a word. Uh, you know, when I'm typing something out and, you know, I'm just, you know, writing an email or writing a, a whatever, and I get little red squiggly lines under half of the stuff I write because I've spelled it wrong. Um, LiveScript doesn't have that problem because as long as it hears the word, it only has the correct spelling to use. So it can't actually misspell any of the words that it's trying to display. Right. So, and I guess one of the key parts of this system uh, to go to one of Alan's questions here, he's asking about how it deals with indistinct audio. Because LiveScript has uh, great audio capabilities, you can plug in any kind of audio source and you can get high quality mics into it. That solves a lot of the problems you might have with other transcription services. It's not like it's trying to capture audio in a room somewhere. You wanna put that mic right in front of somebody's face if you can, that's gonna get you great results. So uh, your question, how does it deal with indistinct audio? It's gonna be the same as any other transcription engine. If it can't really, if there's a lot of background noise and other audio problems, it's gonna struggle with it. But if you have a microphone in someone's face, it's gonna be fine. And we're um, gonna talk a little great. bit about that at the end as well, where we're gonna talk about okay. some of the audio tips. Um, so we are gonna talk about a few things to try to get some better quality audio into the system. But as George said, whether you're using LiveScript or whether you're using a human transcriptionist or any other system that's out there, if it can't hear what someone says, well, it, it doesn't know what to put as the word, right? And even mm -hmm. if you go to you know um, a courtroom and see the results from a transcriptionist, a stenographer that would do that, there are instances where it, you know, the transcription will say inaudible because they they can't understand what was being said. Uh, LiveScript is going to be the same way. If it can't hear something, well, it can't transcribe it um, because it just doesn't understand what was being said. Right. Uh, and if there's multiple people involved, how does that work? If you and I, right now it's transcribing your voice only because you're sitting in a room with it. How does it work if we're both speaking on a broadcast? 
Yeah, so currently the way that it works is it just sends audio straight out, um, doesn't matter what the source is. There is a mode that we are investigating and we've been investigating for a little while called speaker diarization that will be able to distinguish between person A and person B. Um, but it's, it's actually kind of interesting because, um, you know, I've been talking to some people about how stenography works. And one of the things that I was told was in a courtroom, for example, uh, if uh, the lawyers are both talking over top of each other, the judge will say, stop, the stenographer can't transcribe both of you at the same time, only one of you can talk at a time. And live script would be a similar thing. So if multiple people are trying to talk over each other, it will you know, transcribe all of that audio as one block, um, but a human would be the same way. They can only transcribe person A or person B, and if they're both talking over each other, they can't actually transcribe two different people simultaneously. They just, it's not possible to do. Yes, and then of course you'd have to render those results at the same time, which is gonna be impossible too, because you cannot read it at that speed if we're both speaking quickly and trying to read it. Correct. Um, do you wanna jump into the next section where we talk about how to optimize that audio and, and uh, get the best results out of your system? Uh, sure, we can do that. Um, so or did I skip ahead? Sorry, I, I, I think you skipped ahead because what we were also going to do is step three here. So uh, very quickly on right. step two, uh, LiveScript will also send out the audio, uh, sorry, the transcription uh, to a website. You can access it through a QR code that the system will generate for you. Um, so you can give it you know, a meeting name or a date or however you want to um, have the uh, URL and you can follow along with your mobile device. One of the questions we get quite often during the demos is, okay, great, if it's in a room and I have a screen, I can see the transcription, but I want to also have the video feed um, as part of that. How do I do that? And what I want to walk people through is how you would actually add uh, the live script output as an input into a switcher. In this case, I'm going to use our Perl because that's our Perl and it works perfectly for this, but you could use another switcher. And I'm going to show you how you would build a layout in Perl so that you could actually have the transcription from live script as well as a video feed um, to be able to show people how this exactly works. So with that, I'm going to just move a couple things off my screen here. And uh, we can actually start sharing my computer screen. And one thing I do have to do is I have to actually disconnect the um, HDMI cable from my live script unit and put it into my Perl. So just give me a second while I do that. There we go. So what you should be seeing on the screen is the Perl uh, layout screen. So I've got a channel set up as my program channel, which has my computer feed on it. And I'm going to add a new layout. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new item and I'm gonna add a video source. And my video source is my webcam. So we'll add my webcam and there I am. It's as good as I look. I'm going to save that and I'm going to also add in another item, a video source, and I'm going to add in my HDMI A, which I've labeled as being a live script input, and I'm going to add that in and that is going to show it up and by default, it's going to be a full screen transcription or full screen output, but I don't want it to be full screen. I actually want to crop that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it and I'm just going to guess and say it's going to be about there. And there is my transcription cropped. So I'm just going to move that down to the bottom. And then if I hit save and I turn on my live script and we actually go to a full screen of um, just my computer here, I'm going to activate that layout that I just created and we can see oops I was also going to change the font size on my oops on my live script output and we should be able to see the transcription showing up on the bottom of my feed 
uh, hold on, I'm just making sure it's actually going to show up there. What did I do wrong? I think I just had to hit save. Just trying to see. One second here. I might have cropped the wrong part of the screen. Let me just, uh, sorry about this. I did this earlier. Un uncropped version yeah. would be something. There we go. Let's clear the crop there. Okay. So we can see that the, uh, the transcription is there. I think what I did is I actually scaled it by mistake. So let's try cropping that again. There we go. We'll just, we'll just do two lines. There we go. Say that. And then I'll just, there we go. Move that down. There we go. Sorry about that there. Now, if we take a look, we should be seeing the transcription showing up on the video screen as well as my video feed. Um, That's beauty. Um, now, it's really small. There are ways to make it bigger, right? Like you can adjust the size of that? You can. So when I was showing the transcription on my computer monitor, I had it set to a setting of huge uh, because I wanted the, the font to be as large as possible for uh, my computer screen. When I moved it to the video feed, I actually reduced it down to medium, but you could do it to large or whatever size that you wanted it to be. Uh, so you do have some ability to play around with the size. You can also use the Perl to actually scale this a little bit if you wanted to. Um, so you do have a little bit of control over the way that that would work. Um, so that right. you know people can kind of see what the results are and, and kind of you know build out the style and the way you want it to look so that it matches what you want it to do. And that's a great thing about Perl and our layout editor is that you have that complete control over what you want that output to look like. Um, so you, you have just so much control to give it the style, um, which is really impressive. So what, you've got a white text on black. How else can I output this thing? Can I get it so that there's no background or different colors? How does that work? Yeah, so you, you can do that. So uh, there are kind of four different options in terms of that background color. So the first option is uh, white text on a black background like you're seeing now. You could flip-flop that and have black text on a white background if you wanted to. Um, if you do have chroma key options capable, you can also have the background green screened. And then you can choose whether the text is white or black. So you could actually have it as complete floating text if you have chroma keying capability on your switcher. Uh, we do in the, the Perl. Um, you have to kind of play around with the exact coloring and stuff uh, to make it sure, sure. Like work. any chroma key, it's a little fiddly. Yeah, so I, I don't but, want to but go it's very into this is the most basic space. chroma key ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other thing that you can do is, you know, maybe I don't want the uh, transcription to block the uh, video feed, so I could actually scale that down a little bit, and I could add in a background picture. Uh, let's go for that. I don't know. Sure. And with the layout, it's actually layered. So I can move that background to the bottom. So now it's not covering over top of my uh, video feed and save that. And we can see that, you know, I can move things around and position things and, um, you sure, know, sure. all of the right. stuff that we're seeing on this webinar that we're doing, we're using our Perl system to have all of those different layouts. Um, with you know you and me both on the screen or with the slides or my computer feed things like that uh, so you just yeah. have a lot of control and you could do the same thing like you're cropping an HDMI out directly from the device you could also crop it uh, from the browser as well you could there's a there's a web view of this whole transcription that I could crop my Chrome browser and bring that into my switcher as well and do that remotely as well. So there's a lot of ways you can sort of manipulate that output and kind of get it to do what you need. Um, what about SRT uh, and te text files? Can I get a download of all of the copy on this when it's all done? Yeah, so as soon as you hit the stop button on LiveScript, uh, a text file and an SRT file are immediately available for download from AV Studio. So that's uh, what I was talking about where you might want to have multiple people in the team. So maybe mm -hmm. I have someone that is going to take that SRT file and sanitize it, make any corrections that need to be made, 
and then apply it to a video that you recorded and then be able to post that somewhere for a video on demand application. Um, you know, right. if you look at how long it takes to do a transcription, it usually takes anywhere between three to five times, sometimes longer, the length of the audio file to provide a transcription of it. So if it's an hour long session, it might take three to five or maybe a whole day worth of time to provide a transcription of everything that was said. Whereas if you use live script, as soon as you hit stop, you've got that SRT file, you hit playback on your video, you watch it and listen and you know, make those corrections basically in real time. And then that file is ready for you to create that video on demand content. So instead of it taking multiple amounts of time based on the audio, it's basically the same amount of time as your video and you can now get it posted so you can get a very quick turnaround going on. Very nice. Uh, it's a very tidy solution. I, I've, I've used it myself and I, I quite like it. Um, just to remind everybody who's watching, if you have any questions, put them into the chat or into the little question box thingy on Crowdcast um, and we'll get to them. There are some polls here and Greg, what's interesting is from these results, it's looking like most people are looking to do this as lower thirds over a video source. Um, so that's interesting. I'm sure that hopefully that demo was helpful uh, with the Pearl system. But like you said, you can bring these in as lower thirds for any kind of switcher, mm -hmm. however you like. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I guess now is the time to probably jump into how to get that audio uh, working really well sure. for your broadcast, right? And, you know, part of it was exactly what I was doing, right? I have an XLR microphone. Um, you're going to get better audio quality from XLR than you will with a lot of the other sources. Um, you know, for our little back channel, I've got my, my Apple headphones. Um, they're not going to give me nearly as good a quality that I can get from a professional microphone. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is you want to position the microphone um, you know, give or take about six inches away from the person speaking. Um, if you can get a pop filter, you know, on, on, again, on the one I have, I have a little, you know, uh, filter on it uh, just to try to clean a little bit of that audio up. Because again, the better quality audio that you get into the system, the better your results are going to be. Um, you can also adjust the gain in the system itself. So whether you're using XLR or TRS or RCA or three and a half mil, you do have control over the gain uh, directly in the system itself. If you're bringing audio in from HDMI or SDI or USB, you don't have that um, ability through the device itself, but usually you'll be able to do it on, you know, the um, input side. So, you know, in this case for, um, what I have going into our Pearl system, I'm using a USB microphone and it has volume and gain adjustments directly on the microphone so I can you know, adjust things as best as I can. Uh, there is an audio meter on the LiveScript unit on the front screen so you can see the audio quality that you're getting um, that goes, you know, your typical audio meter going from green to yellow to red. You're going to want to adjust your audio so that you're into the yellow occasionally getting to the bottom of the red, um, but not, you know, if you're exceeding the red, you're going to clip your audio so it won't hear things quite as well. If you're low into the green area and not even into the yellow, uh, it's going to be too quiet. So it's not, again, going to be able to hear what's going on because the audio quality is just going to be a bit, a bit too low. Um, and then, you know, you mentioned this earlier when we're, you know, someone kind of had that question, uh, trying to find a quiet room if you can, um, because, you know, if there's a loud fan behind me or there's a bunch of people talking and my microphone is picking all of that up, well, that just means that I'm getting more audio sources in and it's going to distort the audio so that um, the system might not understand it as well. So, you know, get good quality audio into it, adjust your levels, and try to reduce your background noise just so that the audio quality will be as good as possible. And you should get some really great results out of LiveScript. Um, and it's a beautiful thing because you can bring in any kind of audio equipment is gonna go right into this. So you're not gonna need a preamp. Uh, you're not gonna need any other kind of device there. You can, in a lot of cases, I'm sure you're bringing audio directly from a mixer, yep. uh, which is 
like in a, in a live event situation, but you can show up with a microphone and this and, and you're off to the races yep. because of phantom power. <clears throat> Yeah, and so for you know some of the smaller things like uh, maybe it's a corporate town hall meeting um, and there's you know thirty or fifty people in the room, um, maybe the you know CEO just has a microphone and um, you know is going to talk loud enough that people can hear without needing to go into uh, an audio mixer, um, and so in that case, yeah, you have you can use a professional quality uh, microphone you do have phantom power so that it can get those good quality results. But in situations, like you said, maybe I do have it going into an audio mixer so I can have speakers in the room. I could take an output as, uh, from that as an input into LiveScript and, uh, and be good to go. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we are gonna jump over to uh, questions now. So mm -hmm. if you have any questions and you're watching, uh, you wanna see us demo something, Greg's got units there, he'll be happy to, uh, do some on the fly demoing, I'm sure, and, and see what we can make work. Um, if you want details about this product, everything is written out well on the uh, epifan.com uh, website. So go there, you can dive in, and you can book a demo with Greg. If you mm -hmm. wanted a one on one demo with Greg uh, to see how this works for yourself, uh, you can try it out there. So, um, like, like I said, if you've got any questions, put them here now. We've answered actually most of them so far, Greg, uh, just through our presentation. So this could be a shorter uh, webinar for us this afternoon. So we can go get lunch or something like that. Nice. Um, yeah, so we, we don't have it. Oh wait, do we have any questions? Oh yeah, sorry, there are some questions in here. What's the percent accuracy with the live script? That's from John. I think yeah, we so about we, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, an ac exact number is a little difficult to get because it kind of depends on the audio quality, the person that's speaking, uh, a little bit about what they're talking about. Um, so we've run it through a number of tests. Um, and again, we've got it kind of in that low to mid 90% range, um, which compared to even, you know, a couple of years ago, that's, that's a huge improvement. Um, you know, I know I'd looked into systems uh, a few years ago and, you know, the people that were presenting them were touting about how great it was that they were in the 70% range. Um, and as someone, you know, going to a trade show and, and having them present it and, you know, trying it out and seeing that it was missing a third of the words uh, or a quarter of the words was really difficult to follow along with. But with LiveScript, mm. when you're missing, you know, one word out of every 10 at most, uh, you know, you're, you're able to follow along with that really well. Uh, what about custom words? Can, can I use this from Steven? Can users add words or acronyms to the dictionary? So not today. Uh, it is something that, that again, we're looking into, um, trying to figure out exactly the best way to do that, um, both in terms of adding the word, but also the UI of how to, you know, get you to add that word in, record some audio so it knows what it's listening for. Um, okay. So it's, it's a bit of a challenge figuring out how to add custom words in. Uh, I will say, however, that, you know, we are using Google's API for this, and this is the same technology that Google uses for things like Google Now. So they have a vested interest in constantly improving it, adding new words, making it more accurate, um, you know, getting it so that it's just going to be better all the time. And mm -hmm. we are providing some Epifan magic. We're providing the hardware, better way to get your audio in. Um, which provides you know a better solution than you know trying to build something out yourself, which can be quite challenging to do, um, and you know a lot of moving pieces that you have to try to manage. And so as time goes on, the system accuracy will only get better, and more and more terms and words will just magically get added into it, um, and it'll just you know will get better um, just all the time. Right. Um this is from Alan. Can I save the transcription text in Word or Pages or PDF format? Uh, uh, maybe give us a, it's a short answer answer, I'm sure, but uh, how do you put this copy? Yeah, so uh, the, the files that you can download are text files. So it's a .txt or .srt file that you would open up in a text editor. But once you have a text file, then you can control A, control C, yeah, copy yeah, and yeah. paste, you know, throw it into Word or Pages or whatever you want, export it to PDF. Um, so you, you have all the options you want. 
Um, okay. The reason it's that way is because, uh, especially for the SRT file, well, it's not 100% accurate. You may want to go in and make some tweaks and changes to any of the terms sure, that sure. are wrong. Um, but yeah, once once you have a text file, then you can do whatever you want to it, for sure. Okay. Uh, will there be an, an option to sync a curl recording with the SRT file from LiveScript with a, a timestamp? So is there a timestamp with that, that SRT file and could then align it with a, uh, a recording video? Yeah, so there there is a timestamp for the SRT video. It is not currently lined up with um, the timestamp that would be on your Perl because I would hit start recording or start transcribing and start recording at different times uh, between the two. It'll be pretty close if you kind of hit the buttons at the same time. Uh, one thing that will help with that though is Epiphan Cloud uh, because with Epiphan Cloud, you can create groups of different devices and you can start um, you know, streaming or recording on multiple devices at the touch of a button. So you could actually have a LiveScript device as well as a Perl device in Epiphan Cloud as a group, hit one button, and it would start both of them simultaneously. Yeah, and if it's a VOD situation, you could line them up uh, fairly easily just by digging into that SRT file a little bit and, and getting it the way you want it. Yep. Um, would that, here's a question from Yannick. Would that also work on a feed to a YouTube live stream? To a YouTube live stream. I guess so. I guess Yannick's just wondering, I'm, I'm thinking Yannick, you wanna know, can you uh, overlay this transcription onto a video feed and then stream that to YouTube? You could absolutely do that. You just need to have a streaming encoder like a Perl system and a live script um, and away you, you go. Yeah, there, there's kind of two parts to that. So what you just said, 100% works, and that's kind of what we show, right? So you can yeah. have a lower third as part of your video stream and send it out to whatever destination you want from the Perl device. Mm -hmm. The other mm -hmm. part of it could be, I want to actually embed the transcription as metadata file in the video stream so that uh, someone on YouTube can turn the captions on or off at their choosing. Um, that's not something that it does today. Uh, again, it's something that we are looking into. We have a you know a lot of big plans for this solution, um, which is great because it's not something that you know we're just going to put out and never touch again and you know just kind of leave on its own. Uh, so we do have a mm -hmm. lot of plans on things to do to continually improve the system um, and and do some things with it. And so um, you know that's one of the things again we're looking at doing with uh, with LiveScript. Well, how about some music and songs then? That's what John McLaughlin wants to know. Can it transcribe my beautiful music and songs? Uh, and it, it kind of depends on what, again, that audio quality, you want to make sure that it has good audio quality and that it can hear uh, the voice. So, you know, if the background music or the music that's playing is very loud, uh, the system is going to have challenges with hearing the voice and be able to say, oh, that's something I need to transcribe um, and have a little bit more challenge with that. You know, if it's if it's soft listening, uh, you know, things like that, it, it should work fine for that. If you're doing it like heavy metal transcribing, uh, it, it would probably have a little bit more of a challenge with something like that. But it's gonna struggle with those pronunciations. Like when you sing, it's very different from the way you speak and those long stretched out sounds. I imagine it's gonna have a hard time with that. We have not done it. I have not seen any <laughs> rigorous tests on music yet with this. Uh, I'd be curious to see the results on it. Um, anyway, John, let us know how you, if you think about using this in a music a, a situation, I'd love to know more about that. So put a comment in here and, and let, let us know. Uh, John also asks, can you use this for live closed captioning? I guess that's pretty straightforward. Yes, that's what it does, right? Yeah, so the, the difference between closed captioning and transcription is audio cues as well. Uh, so if you were watching something, a, a TV program that has closed captioning and a door slams off screen, that gets captioned because if someone who has hearing challenges is watching, and they can't follow along with what's going on because they don't have that visual indicator that something has happened, um, it, it makes it a challenge for them. Right. With LiveScript, it just does audio transcription. So if someone talks, I provide a transcription of what is being said. Um, 
So it, it doesn't do closed captioning in the traditional sense of those audio cues. Uh, but other than that, yeah, you're, you're good to go. Uh, so something like a news program, no problem because stuff doesn't happen off screen on a news program. Uh, if you're watching a sitcom, well, it's a little bit different because stuff does happen off screen that uh, the audience may need to know if uh, they're just watching the transcription of what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I would never say it's a never thing um, there are you know some things that are definitely higher up in terms of uh, my development plans um, on the roadmap so things like translation speaker diarization diarization custom library some of the stuff that's been brought up um, in my opinion those are kind of some of the things that will make the system from really good to phenomenal. Um, and then once we kind of get a few of those uh, under our belts and, and released, then that's when we're gonna start looking at um, things like um, using it as a, a closed system and, and not needing an uh, internet connection for it. Uh, so it's, it is on the roadmap, but it's further down on the roadmap for sure. Yeah, I will say just quickly about that. So, you know, I did talk about the, the usage model. So it is 9.95 US per hour or part thereof um, of the system when it's actually in use. There is a one-time purchase fee for buying the hardware itself. Um, and again, you can go to our partners on our website and, and get that price. Uh, the analysis that I've done has said basically, you know, after you use it for about 15 or 20 hours, you've hit your break even point from hiring a person to come in and do that transcription for you. And then anything beyond that is just gravy um, because then the system really starts to, um, you know, you've gone from, you know, uh, a human fee that goes up like this constantly over time to a one-time purchase with a small increment uh, of uh, per hour use. Uh, so you really make your money back very quickly on using a solution like LiveScript as compared to hiring a person to come in and, and uh, perform that work. <laughs> okay. I can hear you. Um, but I think unless there's any other questions, I think we were pretty much wrapped up at that point. Um, okay. Okay, so what, for wireless microphones, they don't need special tools. Um, basically, you have uh, an audio, you have to have some kind of audio uh, input source. So let me back up here for a second. In our studio, we have wireless labs that connect to an XLR um, dongle that plugs into the live script unit. And so for something like that, you're easily able to use a wireless lab um, it sends its signal to an XLR that is connected to the live script unit. If you were to use a, uh, a Bluetooth type device, so I just you know have Bluetooth uh, ear pods or something like that, uh, there is no Bluetooth audio input on the live script device. So you wouldn't be able to use something like that. Um, but yeah, as long as it has a way to get the uh, audio input into the live script device, you're, you're good to go. Okay, uh, so we apparently can't hear George anymore. I can still hear George. Uh, so I guess maybe when I made that comment, um, 
Uh, you guys might not have known what I was talking about, but apparently George's uh, audio feed is is dead on the stream. Uh, I am still hearing him through the back channel that we have, so uh, that's where I'm getting the questions from. Uh, he just asked uh, whether or not we can get the transcription into an RTMP stream. Um, and that would be something very similar to what we just showed you with going into a Perl system and then having the Perl system um, you know, send out that web stream uh, for someone so that they could have the, the video as well as the audio, or sorry, the video as well as the transcription. Um, and then that could get streamed out to a, an end destination. Um, the live script unit itself only sends it out to uh, through the HDMI cable or to a dedicated web page uh, that you have a little bit of control over um, so that you can, uh, that URL that each live script device goes to, the beginning part of it is going to be based on the hardware device itself. So it has a unique serial number so that, you know, this live script device isn't going to be streaming its content over top of another live script device. But the back part of that, you could put in anything that you wanted from a user standpoint. So a lot of people are putting in the date that the event is going on or uh, the title of what that event is. And that's kind of how they're identifying the individual URL streams for their specific events. Um, and then it'll get streamed to, to that web page uh, whenever the transcription is started at that point. So um, George is saying that we don't have any other questions at this point. If you do have other questions, you can reach out to us. We're, again, more than happy to uh, you know answer any of them. Um, I'm happy to do live demos of this solution. Uh, I've been doing a fair amount of them, uh, and it works really well, um, very similar to kind of what we've seen here. Uh, you can go to our website, so www.epfan.com. Uh, there is a product page for LiveScript where you can get some more information on it. Uh, you can, you know, go on to that page as well and you can um, fill out a little bit of information and get into a queue and, and we'll reach out to you and, and get things organized for doing a demo. Um, or, you know, just go to the web page and get some more information. There's brochures, there's product information on there, um, and hopefully that'll answer a lot of your questions. Yeah, and uh, we do have a number of units that uh, are available. So um, we did just get a shipment in about a week ago. Um, we have started selling those pretty quickly already, which is, is phenomenal news. I'm really excited about that and really excited to get that into our customers' hands. Um, we have been shipping them um, you know, since about May um, with our initial batch and now we've gotten more units in and we're starting to ship those out. So uh, you can buy them right now and um, get them and, and start putting them into your workflows. Um, I think it'll really help and, and really improve things for, for people that are looking for this type of solution. Oh, one last question. Right, so we're, we're looking at different color options. Um, so they're looking at whether you could have uh, different color options and therefore you could have two different live script units, one that's transcribing for person A, one for person B, and you could feed both of those into a video feed or um, you know have them top and bottom or something like that. Uh, currently, the answer is essentially no. Um, we do have the white on black and black on white options or the green screen options that are, are available for that. Um, but the text itself, basically those are your only two options. There are, however, a lot of different things that you could do where um, you could have you know, both of those inputs coming into something like a Perl and you could have different background colors on them, um, you know, green screen it out, have, you know, different background colors or something so that you could uh, have a little bit more control of doing it that way. But from the live script output directly, uh, basically that's that's the only options you've really got at this stage. Um, that's kind of one of the first times I've heard that type of request. Uh, so I can, I can ponder it a little bit. I don't think it would actually be too hard to do. Uh, but it's not something that's uh, that's currently on my roadmap, at least. But I can can look at that a little bit more. 
Uh, and then, you know, we're doing a lot of these webinars next week. George, what do we have uh, coming up next week? Do we know? Hold on. He's just looking it up right now. Uh, so, you know, we've been doing these for quite a while. We have a, a slew of them still coming down the pipe um, as long as people are still interested. Oh. So in about two weeks from now, we're doing one on networking, troubleshooting networking. So uh, for live streaming uh, your, your uh, event out. Uh, so we'll have a lot of tips and tricks on how to troubleshoot your networks and, and get your streams to look as good as they possibly can. Oh, right. And then we also have our live show that happens every Thursday. Um, so that's at three o'clock, George. Yeah, three o'clock. <laughs> and so uh, every Thursday at three o'clock, we have a live show. And tomorrow we're talking specifically about multicam setups. So if you're looking at setting up a, a studio with multiple different cameras, getting different angles, uh, they'll have some ideas about how to best set up one of those uh, types of studios for you. So it should be pretty interesting. And with that, I believe that uh, we've got everything covered for this webinar. As I said, there's a bunch of information on our website. Please feel free to, to drop by and, <laughs> and George can wave, even though we can't hear him. And uh, hopefully you guys will join us again for uh, our live show tomorrow and in our webinar in two weeks from now. Thanks very much for joining.